saying you wouldn't sort of get on an aeroplane, you know, with a pilot that hadn't uh, sort of passed his, his flying exams. But, you know, we can take somebody off the street and we can have them in a, a, a valve sales office for three or four months and then they can be specifying valves to go into nuclear power stations, chemical plants, pharmaceutical plants, food and beverage plants. Welcome to the Valve and Process Solutions Visionaries podcast, where we meet some of the most fascinating folk involved in the development and implementation of valves, actuators and other engineering solutions. In this episode, Steve Pearson explains why professionals and employers working across the valve industry need a globally recognised qualification and certification demonstrating knowledge at different levels in the industry. How he's developed Valve Academy and launched a taster module. Why you might want to get involved and have a go at the free taster module right away and how your feedback will shape the future of the Valve Academy. Enjoy the episode. Steve, thanks so much for joining me on the podcast today. It's been a little while since um, you were this side of the microphone on a podcast. You were talking about prolonging the lifespan of your valves. Last time we recorded an interview with you. Since then, you've been interviewing other folk in the industry But you've also been pretty busy with Valve Academy. What's been going on and um, principally why Valve Academy? Okay, hi Jamie. Good uh, to see you again. Thanks for coming in. Um, I think, yeah, as you said, the last couple of uh, podcasts we did got quite a lot of interest um, with, especially the one with Frank Sinclair about the uh, sort of the history of Westlock, etc. And I think on the tail end of that, we, we briefly mentioned Valve Academy and what we were looking to do. Um, things have progressed quite a bit since then. So um, if we can just maybe give our listeners an update. Um, first of all, why Valve Academy? Um, I think we've been in the industry, you know, sort of uh, nearly 20 years now and, and meeting all the various different people that I've met over the years. Um, we're still quite astounded that there's no real formal qualification for the valve industry and um, there's not really a qualification for people either working in the valve industry or even just working with valves to be able to work towards and we find that um, you know quite difficult to believe really after so much time there's obviously qualifications that people can get on certain products they can go on different manufacturer training courses Um, some of the steam equipment manufacturers offer training and various certification levels um, but it's generally um, brand-led and also that um, you know there's a heavy content of that particular supplier's product within the training. Um, I think the reason for launching Valve Academy was really to come up with some kind of a brand neutral um, training um, course or platform or, or whatever we were going to come up with that people could go to and, and actually get knowledge on valves. So we basically started um, putting things in place to develop that and we've we've done quite a lot of work with it so far. I think the kind of premise of it originally was was more of a kind of a knowledge and a safety side of things that you can have people specifying valves, sizing valves, working on valves, maintaining valves who've actually got no qualification whatsoever to to do that and a lot of it's only basically covered under general engineering practice on apprenticeships or within work placement schemes and things like that. So it was really to develop somewhere that people could turn um, a trusted um, place that they could go to to get this knowledge. We've seen also lay a lot of um, the experience and the knowledge we've got in the industry. You know, people are retiring now, they're leaving the industry, and there's not a lot of young blood and new people coming in. So we are losing a lot of that expertise, and there's nowhere that that expertise has been captured. Okay. Mm, so it's really giving us that platform to uh, to be able to put that across to people, and somewhere people can go to learn and, and pick up that knowledge. And on the back of that, if we can develop it far enough, is, is for them to actually be able to come out of it with a qualification at the end. Right, great. Okay, so the, the reasons are varied. First of all, the lack of a global, recognised, industry-neutral qualification. That uh, means that individuals in the industry have something that recognises and even could, uh, in due course, accredit their knowledge. 
Um, for employers as well, it, it means that they know that the person has a certain amount of knowledge. Very much so, yeah. And um, as you say, that people can go and specify or even install a valve in certain situations without necessarily having as much knowledge as you would like them to have. I think so, yeah. I think, I mean, we joked about it a little bit a while back, saying you wouldn't sort of get on an aeroplane, you know, with a pilot that hadn't yeah. uh, sort of passed his, his flying exams. But, you know, we can take somebody off the street and we can have them in a, a, a valve sales office for three or four months and then they can be specifying valves to go into nuclear power stations, chemical plants, pharmaceutical plants, food and beverage plants, you know, with really only the on-the-job knowledge that they've been gained. And that knowledge is really only as good as, as the people around them that have maybe picked that knowledge up over the years. So, again, it was, it was really to kind of, you know, make the industry better you know, and, and provide a, um, a benchmark qualification that people can, you know, hold up and be proud of and, and say, you know, I went through this course, I, I came out the other end with this qualification. For me as an employer as well, it also gives us the opportunity to to distinguish between different levels of, of knowledge and expertise. We get a lot of people that apply for jobs. Um, they've been in the valve industry for quite a long time. And there's no way of um, distinguishing one candidate from another apart from really the number of years experience that they've got and yes. maybe some of the products that they've worked with. From my point of view, it would be really good if somebody could come for an interview and say, well, you know, I'm qualified to Valve Academy fundamentals level or I'm qualified to Valve Academy practitioner level. It would just give us that little bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, you, you know, um, it, it recognises the expertise. Exactly, and, and, well a, bench, the and a benchmark. Yeah. yeah, and I think also for some of the people that have been working in on the industry a long time, we've had a lot of questions where people say, well, oh, Valve Academy is for the new starters and the people. But I think from the fundamentals up, um, practitioner and advanced levels, I think it's it's going to be great for people that have been in the industry a long time as well yes. that could probably go through these courses relatively quickly um, you know, and, and pass them and then have a qualification and a, a, a certification to say, yeah, yeah, you know, this backs up the knowledge that I've gained over the last 20 years rather than just, you know, a piece of paper that says I've worked for such and such company and such and such company and, and just list the jobs they've had really rather than the qualifications that they've got. So that's really where we're trying to go with the Valve Academy. Um, and we've been working hard in the background to get something uh, off the ground to uh, get that going. Brilliant. And I'd like to ask you about that next. But uh, clear purpose then that benefits individuals benefits employees and benefits employers in the industry in terms of um, certification um, in due course and standardizing knowledge at different levels from from beginner through to very advanced people as yes. well so that people know what it is that people at different levels know about and, and uh, when with regards to valves yes Grand. Okay, so you said you've been working very hard since we last um, spoke on the podcast about getting Valve, Valve Academy set up and launched. So, what's happened? <laughs> what's happened since then? Uh, quite a, quite a bit. Um, I think the first thing really was to to kind of get the idea of how we were going to take this to market. Um, and to get it to um, the people that really need it. And we looked at all sorts of different ways of delivering training. We looked at holding seminars. We looked at doing on-site training programs. Um, but we feel that the, the real way forward this and, and to be able to affect as many people as we possibly can was to go down the e-learning um, route. So that's what we've been sort of researching in the background, working with um, to basically develop an e-learning platform um, that can put this training across in, in the best possible way. But also, from my point of view, I like that we can sort of do it in an in a interactive kind of way and also an applications-led type of environment. I think sometimes we go to these training courses, um, whether it be manufacturer training courses or otherwise, and it's it's a bit like death by PowerPoint. Right, you yeah. sort of sit in the morning and you'll do two or three hours, you'll go through 50 or 60 PowerPoint slides, you then have a big hefty lunch, and then you go back in the afternoon a little bit tired and, and you do another 50 or 60 slides. And they might, if you're lucky, be some kind of a questionnaire at the end of the day to kind of um, you know reiterate the knowledge that you've learned. 
Um, or even not learning. Or even not learning <laughs> in, in some respects, yes. Learning certainly doesn't suit everyone. No, very much so. But I think the way people work nowadays, you know, they can't have time out of the office to go, you know, on a three or four day um, training course, much as, as I think we should be doing and, and we'd like to do. So really the e-learning platform offers a lot from our point of view. It, it means we can get into people's offices, we can get into their homes, we can get onto their portable devices. And really the way we're trying to develop the platform, it, it it's a study anywhere so you know people can do it at work they can do it at home they can do it in the leisure time and also it's on multiple devices so they can really you know do it in the office if, if the employer will allow them to but they likewise they can do it on an ipad they can do it on you know the tablets they can do it on the phone even if if they really want to and we're going to break the modules down into bite-sized chunks as well so somebody doesn't have to sit down for three or four or five hours at a time and go through they can do little modules you know pause it when they've done a certain amount come back to it pick it up where they left off from and continue through the modules so it's a really user-friendly um way of delivering that kind of type of learning okay um, and, and i'm going to just interrupt you there uh, to ask a question that some folk might have it's a user-friendly type of learning do people need to install any special software on the device you said they can access it through multiple devices but is it um, is it browser-based or do, do they need to download anything is it easy to do that's a really good question um as I say, we've been testing various different formats and, and the way that we're looking at at the moment is we will basically have a hosted system. So there will be no need to download software or anything like that. People, when they decide to, to embark on their learning journey, um, will be given an enrollment, um, sort of a login and an ID, which I think most people are familiar with for just about any kind of um, website that they go to to use the tools that are on there. And that will be the e-learning platform. We will run the e-learning platform and every time they log in they'll be able to pick up where they left off they'll be able to work through the modules and then at the end of the modules they'll get the points or the certification or or whatever that module denotes Um, and that will all be kept on the server at our end so they don't have to have it on various devices and at various different machines to give a good example of that um, what we've tried to do is because this is a very new platform for a lot of people um, our industry is still um, a little bit behind the times when it comes to technology we tend to use a lot of technology in the valves that we actually use yes. but um, the, the the infrastructure around the valve industry tends to be um, a little bit uh, old-fashioned sometimes so the first stage was we've we've built a website um, yes. which you can go to and we'll put the link up um, at the end of the podcast and that allows people to go and they can see what Valve Academy is a little bit about. So it tells them some of the things we've discussed this morning and goes into a little bit more detail. It tells the type of people that Valve Academy is for. So be it people selling valves, be it people maintaining valves, be it people specifying valves. Even resellers who probably buy valves as a little bit of an add-on to all the things they do, but they'd just like to know some of the terminology, etc. Okay. So the actual website gives that um, information on there. What it also does is it allows you to enroll in to the Valve Academy. Um, very simple process. You put your email address in there, um, a few little details about you, and then you'll get a double opt-in email from us, which allows you to uh, sign up to the Valve Academy. Please check your spam, by the way, if you do log in, because we have noticed that some people it does go into a, um, a spam, and you need to just check that it's in there. Like we're signing up to any newsletter, just you know, if you want it, make sure you exactly, that. exactly. Yeah. And then part of the enrollment process, um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build a community. So mm. we want to get people within the valve industry together in a place that we can communicate and contact them quite easily. But what we've also done is we've developed a taster module because we feel that the e-learning platform for our industry in particular is quite new. Yeah. Um, so we've done a very basic taster module to let people get a flavour for how e-learning works, and it's based around a couple of Valve products. Um, people can log on, they can work their way through the module, they can interact with the module, they can see the look and the feel of the module, um, and, and really get a flavour for how it works. They also get the opportunity to meet um, the Valve mentor in there, which again is a new thing for e-learning within that platform. There's a mentor who guides you through the different sections, will help you out with things, challenge you a little bit on some of the questions. But it's a very, very um, low entry taster module, not really to test anybody's knowledge or ability, but really just to give a a flavour of how e-learning works. And I think that then will be able to give us the platform to build on. 
how does the module work? How long will it take them to work through the module? What what what, uh, uh, what, what will it um, show them? Yeah. Okay. The so the the, the module is very very simple. Um, you you basically you log in and, and there's various different sections and and you can see a little bit of how how the module is going to come together. We've only developed the first part or the front end of it, so they will log in. And then basically what it will do is it will deliver some information to you about a particular product um, in the way of graphics, in the way of uh, images of valves. Um, there'll be various bits of text, etc. Some parts of the module, um, you have to drag and drop um, answers into boxes. Um, you have to click on various bits to move through to the new section. And if you get the answers wrong, the mentor will pop up and, you know, he'll maybe challenge you on it. He'll maybe point you in the right direction. He'll maybe give you a further bit of information which may aid you moving through to the next part of the, uh, to the, part of the process. Again, it's a very, very basic entry just to give people an idea of how it's going to look. But we feel this way of e-learning we're going to be able to use very, very effectively for delivering the training over the, over the coming months and years. I think from the mentor side of things, we'll be able to use that much more when we get into application-based learning. So we're not just going to be showing people, this is a ball valve. What do you think a ball valve should do, etc. Et We're going to try to put real-life examples on there, looking at maybe engineers that work in chemical factories, pharmaceutical factories, power, food and beverage, and look at real-life examples of the everyday uh, questions that come up for those types of, of people within those industries and then look at using the platform to deliver the relevant training to give the people the tools that they need to solve the problems um, and as they progress through they'll be able to go into different sections so the module itself probably takes about five minutes to complete not very very complicated again not going to ask anybody any questions realistically that if they don't you know, if they don't partake in the module and, and read the information that's on there, that they shouldn't be able to answer. So it's not too taxing. It's, it's really more of a flavor, as we've said. Yes. Um, and what we want then really is, is people to, um, you know, help us shape the future, as we've said. We really want them to be able to give us some feedback on, on what they thought of the module, things that they'd like to see, um, you know, when we actually put the training modules into place. Because the... Valve industry is so diverse that we want to be able to cover a lot of different aspects of it. So I think the feedback and building this community of people will be the way forward with that. Okay, so what sorts of feedback have you had so far then, Steve, from people who've taken at the Taster module? Um, to be honest, I've been quite surprised at the amount of feedback we've actually had. We've had some fantastic comments. Um, a lot of them are based around how easy um, the tutorial or the, the taster module is to navigate around. People said how they like the graphics, they like the interactability with it, so they're actually engaged with the actually learning process rather than just reading and reading and reading. Um, there's a few people said they like the mini quizzes at the, in between each section because that keeps them engaged, it helps with the learning. I think a lot of Sometimes you go on a course or you do a learning module and you have to do it right to the very end and you've almost forgot most of the things that you've learned. So I think they like that. Um, and that helps them to retain the information, I think, and help them to move on from you know section to section and, and, and keep kind of the, the enthusiasm going. Um, most people that we've, we've got feedback say they really like um, what we're doing. They like the idea of um, the Valve Academy as a whole and that the, um, the industry is finally... Um, getting the the credit the accreditation it deserves and then you know following on for that we've had quite a bit of constructive feedback as well um yes. and and that's the most important to us really because that'll help us to shape the future of of what we're trying to do and shape the future of the industry and and that really comes down to topics that people would like to see included um asking if there's even things around valves we you know people asking about instrumentation and, and things about you know that could be included as well and and quite a lot of lists of things that people would like to see and, and things that would like to be covered so that's great for us because it gives us a real good um, list of things to make sure we tick off as we go through the learning modules and make sure you know our students um, requirements are uh, considered and, and covered in the modules as we develop them so on a whole I've been really really pleased what we really need now is more people to sign up and, and more feedback so we can carry on the work that we've started. 
Grand. Okay, thanks, Steve. So, a call to action then for folk listening it, right now is to ha- have a go at the taste module. I think so. Yeah, go to the website. Um, enter your details in there on the enrolment page. Um, you'll then get um, a, a couple of emails which just verify you are who you are and you're not a robot and all all the basic things we have to do nowadays. And no one else is signing you up against your will. Yeah, so. you're not Mickey Mouse at Disney <laughs> or something like that. Um, and then you will instantly be given access to the taster module. Um, you can then work through that at your leisure. You can go back to it as many times as you like. As I said, it takes about five minutes to complete. Um, it's not very taxing. Um, you get a flavour for it. And then you will basically be given um, an option where you can provide some feedback to us, anything you liked, anything you didn't like, anything you think you could improve, anything you'd like to see in, in, in the training modules when we launch them and develop them. How long does it take to give feedback, Steve? It's very easy and very quick to do. And if people give you feedback, then that will help in terms of building a Valve Academy for the future that is responsive to what individuals and industry need and want most. What's in it for them in terms of giving you feedback beyond uh, beyond making it responsive to them? Well, we'd, we'd, we'd very much like people to provide feedback, to, you know, to be part of the community and, and to help shape the future as we've said but if people are willing to provide us with the feedback and we can capture that we'll uh, we'll send them a token of our appreciation so they'll be receiving something uh, shortly after completing the feedback form great so website address is of course on the show notes but steve do you want to give it out as well yes it's www.valveacademy.co.uk steve thanks ever so much thank you You've been listening to the Valve and Process Solutions Visionaries podcast. Today we've been talking about Valve Academy, so why not go to valveacademy.co.uk and enrol in the free taster module. And remember, advice doesn't come in a box, it comes from Valve and Process Solutions. So if you want to challenge us to solve a problem, whether it's a single valve or an entire process, drop us a line, pick up the phone or visit vandpsolutions.com. We deal with all inquiries and requests for advice on a case-by-case basis so you get the right solution for your application or project. If you've enjoyed this podcast, or if there's someone you think we should be interviewing, then let us know. Just drop us an email. Email kim at vandpsolutions.com.